Hello everyone. Uh, we stopped at the reconstructive and displacive transformations that happen in an iron carbon phase diagram. So here again, I am showing you the TTT diagram of steels, uh, showing the reconstructive phase transformations that happen for perlites and displacive transformations that happen for martensites and penites. So these displacive transformations are very important as their products are also very important. The volume fraction of these products uh, which are formed by this displacive transformation, they directly affect the mechanical properties of steel. For example, the steels in venetic condition show a remarkable combination of strength and toughness. Also, a large volume fraction of this a secular needle-shaped ferrite also enhances the toughness of steels. So these structures which are formed by displacive transformations, they lead to very important products which are used by mankind. So when I say martensite, where does this name martensite come from? Well, it came from the renowned scientist and metallographer Adolf Martens and Adolf Martens was born on 6th March 1850 in Beckendorf. It's a small village near Hagenau in mecklenburg schwerin where his father was an estate tenant and he started in 1867 as a locksmith and a cabinet maker. Eventually in 1868 he went to the Royal Industrial Academy at Krollstrasse in Berlin and he completed his formation as an engineer in 1871. Martin was engaged at the Royal Prussian Railways and was initially at the Ostbahn. Ostbahn means Eastern Railways and today it is in uh, Poland, this Bromberg uh, area, where he was involved with bridges, metallic structure and construction supervision. Eventually, in 1875, he changed to Royal Railway Authority in Berlin and where he got involved with the acceptance of rails and other steel products. This was the time where he got interest and got inspired by the study of natural sciences, mineralogy and botany, where he saw people could see different structures. So when he was involved in the acceptance of rails and other steel products, he thought, why can't I see these things and analyze what I am getting? Is it good quality steel? Will, will it be used in a proper way when I work with these steels in the railways? So in 1878, from 1875 to 1878, he came up with the standard protocols for metallurgical analysis of steel and steel products. Further, as time passed, he realized the normal microscope used by people in biology and mineralogy, it, it was not serving the same purpose as we require for steels because they have high reflectivity. So in 1880, he described a new microscope suitable for analysis of metallic sections at high magnifications, which was used by him. Then he left the railways and in 1880, he joined as an assistant of a professor at the Royal Industrial Academy in Berlin. In 1889, Martin was nominated as a professor of the Technical University of Berlin. After that, in 1904, a new institute of material testing was created by merging several institutes under Professor Martins. And in 1905, he earned his doctorate in engineering by Technical University in Dresden. Dr. Martins was very, very successful by the time he joined TU Berlin. So uh, the institute really earned a lot of name while he was there. In 1913, he really fell sick. Martin passed away on the evening of July 24th, 1914. He was the first person who gave different metallographic sections of gray cast iron, steel specimens, the cooling rates of different steel defined different dendrites and he named it for the very first time as pine tree-like crystals. 
the most important innovation of sorby and martins was the investigation of sections of pieces under investi under investigation the techniques for grinding and polishing were adopted from mineralogy the importance of consumables for the quality and reproducibility of the result was carefully described in martins papers also the etching techniques were carefully developed by martens and several chemical agents and their applicability was shown so here you can see a clear image of his notebook where he used to draw his own structure and used to write the correct procedure which agent has to be used and what different structures look like in 1880 in the journal of vdi martin described a new microscope suitable for analysis of metallic sections at high magnification which is shown here an important element of this microscope was the oblique illumination of the specimen the photographic plates could be directly exposed and martens also gave a practical advice for the deposition of adequate emulsions on glass plates in 1898 floris osmond published in france a paper describing a general method for microstructural analysis of carbon steels and in this he gave several names of the several metallographical constituents observed in steels and he named them as uh, sorbite trussite and martensite furthermore martens also gave us our first brinell hardness tester he gave the calibration of load cells and manometers he also gave us the scratch hardness tester tensile testing system for cement manometer with the mirror measurements and testing of lubricant oil so all this was published by martens in the handbook of materials technology for mechanical engineering in part 1 for material testing and part 2 the technically most important properties of metals and alloys these both were the huge contributions of adolf martens to metallography and eventually which led to the name of one of the phases that is martensite although it his work is not directly related to martensite formation but indirectly it has a huge huge contribution for metallography and for us metallurgists and material scientists so the martensitic phase that we know the microstructure that we know of today looks like this for an iron carbon phase diagram that is steels we can see plate like structures we can see lath like structures and we can see lenticular like structures and we can have two different phases the alpha prime phase of martensite which is bct phase and it is hard or an epsilon martensite phase which is hcp phase and it is soft so till now we have been speaking about martensite in steel in iron carbon phase diagram so are martensite transformation seen only in steels well no these can be seen in other alloy systems as well like iron manganese silicon nickel titanium based alloys nitinol copper based alloys like copper zinc copper zinc aluminum copper nickel aluminum and what are these these are all shape memory alloys and all shape memory alloys have martensitic transformations so here you can see nitinol in hot water and it has regained its original shape here you can see a pair of grasses which have been crumpled and with heat they regain is their own shape original shape so we'll talk about shape memory alloys later on during this uh, part of the course but currently i just want to give you an idea when i say martensite it's not just about the iron carbon phase diagram it can be about any of these as well so when i say martensite can you name and make a list of some characteristic features of martensite or martensitic transformations that you might know or you have heard of you may pause the presentation here and make a list the first
first thing that comes to our mind is diffusionless. When I say martensitic transformations, that means all diffusion mechanisms have failed and there is no time for diffusion to happen. So what is the evidence for the diffusionless character of martensite? Can anyone give any suggestions? Well, we can remember the iron carbon phase diagram and we know that uh, when we quench our austenite with a very fast speeds, we get martensite. So, can we say martensite can form at very low temperatures where diffusion, even the interstitial atoms do not have enough time to move and is not conceivable over the time period of the experiment? Well, that is not true. Here I show you the table. It gives for different materials, different MS temperature. MS means martensite start temperatures at which martensite is forming. So you can see zirconium oxide, 1200 Kelvin. Iron nickel carbon, 83 Kelvin. Iron nickel carbon with a different, different composition of nickel. Kelvin and less than that and so on so forth. So here one more thing is important. You can see argon nitrogen system which is not a solid solid system and still we have a martensite transformation. So that means martensite can be not just for solid solid transformations but also for gaseous transformations. So we were talking about is the reason for the diffusionless character of martensite? Well, a low temperature transformation is not a sufficient evidence for the diffusionless transformation. So what can be another reason? Can you think about it? Martensite can form extremely rapidly. Martensite plates can grow at speeds which approach that of sound in the metal. Speed of sound in metal is around 1100 meter per second. Compare it with the fastest solidification rate. That is around, uh, solidification rate means diffusional character. That is highest in nickel, around 80 meter per second. It can grow slowly in some cases, like in shape memory alloys, where the interface velocity is small enough to be observed. You could see the martensite transformations happening for the images that we just saw a few slides back where the growing and ungrowing of martensite is at a slow rate. So this rate, rapid or slow, is not an evidence for the diffusional characteristic of martensite. So what can be another reason? Well, the austenite is converting into martensite. So if we check the chemical composition of martensite, and we check the chemical composition of austenite. And if both are identical, that means there is no compositional change, there is no phase change as we defined in the last lecture. Then we are getting martensite and it shows us the diffusion less character of martensite is. So can you tell me how can you quantify this composition of the parent and martensite phases? Well, you can use atom probe microscopy, which is ex uh, which we have access to uh, at IIT Roper. You can give your samples to your supervisor if you want to work on this field. And they can send it across to IIT Chennai. And there they have this atom probe microscopy and we have an access to it. And you can get the composition of austenite and martensite and you can check it and both of them come out to be thin. So till now we have seen the evidence for diff diffusion less character of martensite is that the parent phase and the martensitic phase both have the same composition and this can be checked by atom probe microscopy and in the next lecture we will talk about other characteristics of martensite and if you have any question, you can write to me on WhatsApp or you can 
send me an email and I'll be there to answer your doubts. Thank you.